It is Fiddleback Friday. I'm Robert with Fiddleback Forge, and I've got amazing knives to show you, just like I do every single week. Well, the weeks I do a video anyway, but here are the awesome knives for this week. All right, we're just gonna start with the stars of the show, the Fiddleback family, Amy with the Warlander Enterprises, killing it. Look at that three-piece kitchen set from Joey Berry with JB Knife Works with that new Opal G10 from Pops Knife Supply. And what on earth is this? Alan Searles, W.A. Searles, killing it with that frontier style knife. Look at that copper bolster, leather wrap. I mean, that thing's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. And of course we got the classic fiddlebacks with the pterosaur, got some EDCs back here. Liuku, Drop Point, Renegade. Ooh, Low Country, making a return. And then we got the Bushcrafter and Bushcrafter Jr. Going to show you the comparison between those. Warthog and the Maverick and the Drop Point Maverick. Going to show you the difference between those as well. Pretty awesome Fiddleback Friday. Glad you guys could make it. Okay, so if you are new to Fiddleback Friday and Fiddleback Forge, this is how we roll. Every single Friday, we release knives at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our website, fiddlebackforge.com slash Friday. Now, every Thursday-ish or Friday morning, we release a preview of those showing you all the specs and photos of what's coming up that particular Friday, even if this video doesn't get done. That's right, sometimes there's no video. I know, heartbroken. Fiddlebackforge.com slash preview is where you can go to see that. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter while you are there, because guess what? We'll even send it to you in your inbox so you never miss one. All right, so that's what Fiddleback Friday is, but how do you get one of these amazing knives? Well, it's pretty simple, really. You go to the website, fiddlebackforge.com slash Friday, before 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you refresh your screen, you guessed it, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You select the knife that you would like to show up in your mailbox the following week, but there's a catch. Putting it in your cart does not guarantee you get the knife. It is the first person who finishes the entire checkout process who gets that knife in their mailbox next week. So make sure that person is you. Make sure you're there early and ready to hit refresh and check out quickly. So, all that said, now you know the rules, now you know how it happens, but now you need to see those knives in hand. So let's do that right now. All right, so we have to start out the Fiddleback family discussion this week, of course, with Joey Berry, JB Knife Works, Kitchen Trio, and that brand new Opal G10. Brand new handle material out of Pops Knife Supply. As you can see, it's gorgeous. If you saw this on, a, on a, just a scale material and a brick, you wouldn't think that it would turn out to be as gorgeous as this is, but you throw some natural liners, some white pinstripes on that bad boy, it's gorgeous. And anyone with an eyeball and a kitchen would surely think this is a fantastic addition to their kitchen, especially when you've got this particular set of three, starting out with this one. Uh, this is the paring knife. It's more of a petty style uh, for doing your smaller produce uh, and your paring activities, obviously. Um, absolutely stunning. So that's going to take care of your smaller items and your kind of day-to-day -day, uh, smaller kitchen stuff. But then you've got the American Gyotu, which is Joey's rendition of a Japanese Gyotu, but it's got a more traditional Western style uh, chef knife handle, which to me makes for a really great combination. A lot of times when you see these, uh, they have a hidden tang and a very super lightweight handle on them that makes them a lot more blade biased which for newer users novice users especially um, it's not as confidence inspiring as having something that's a little more balanced at that midpoint like an american chef knife is right there because uh, that way when you're actually up on that heel um, or up towards the heel of the blade uh, with your fingers you get a lot of control a lot of balance it feels super nimble even to be the size that it is uh, with seven and a half inch blade 12 inches overall um, this one here is in 330 seconds, 8670 steel, so it's got plenty of strength for every single thing that you're going to want to do. And it's more of a general purpose uh, food prep chef knife. So 
got that one. And then to round out the trio is actually a new one from Joey. This is his version of a Nakiri, which is another traditional Japanese knife. Now this one is purely for processing vegetables. So because it keeps the same thickness all the way up, uh, the blade is super strong, even all the way up there on the tip end. Uh, so if you're chipping, you know, doing some heavy dense uh, vegetables, super easy to do so. And obviously this one's a little bit more on the thin side with 1 8670 steel, which makes it better for vegetables. So if you think of a, uh, say a, 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 a carrot slice or cucumber slice, like a chunk of wood, when you hit a chunk of wood with an ax, uh, it only cuts for you know a few inches into that before it actually splits that material in half. Well, you don't want that when you're preparing vegetables. You want the cut to actually take place all the way through. So you want a nice high grind that this has on a thinner steel, which that 1 16th fits the bill. Nothing better for slicing vegetables than this right here. So with the trio, you get the magician for the vegetables, you get the general chef knife for general food prep, and you got your small produce handled. You don't need anything else in your kitchen for preparing any meal, possibly ever, than these right here. So Joey Berry knocked it out of the park as usual. The Opal G10 is gorgeous, new handle material. These are the first knives you're seeing out with them. Absolutely stunning. All right, if you want diversity, nothing stands apart from the super clean kitchen lines of the JB Knife Works model than the super clean Frontier style from W.A. Searles. Mr. Alan Searles, of course, was a VP here at Fillback Forge, and this shows you the diversity of the talent that has moved through the Fiddleback Forge shop over the years. Obviously, Alan's Techniques and designs stand alone for sure. Uh, definitely stand out from the Fiddleback Forge style. That curly quarter sawn oak he's got on this bad boy is absolutely gorgeous. Tapered tang, as you can see right there. Beautifully finished. And this right here, copper bolster with a rawhide wrap. Dude, that thing is amazing. That is absolutely stunning. He's got uh, the spalted A2 steel on there. That blade is six and a half inches long. 12 and a quarter overall in hand. I mean, this thing is astonishing. If you're into more of a fighting style knife and feel something that really just locks into your hand and lets you know that this thing, no matter what you do with it, it's not gonna move. And it's definitely not afraid of some outdoor tasks. This right here might be the model for you. It's got a flat grind on there, that A2 steel. is 5 30 seconds thick at the start. So you know you get a thick, tough, dependable knife and it doesn't get more gorgeous than that right there. So that's Alan Searles, W.A. Searles, Raptor XL. It said, that beast, well, let's set that beast right about there. And another piece of wonderful diversity that's come out of the shop, Amy with Warlander Enterprises, killing it as usual, with this otter right here, OD canvas, oh, absolutely gorgeous natural liners, those orange pinstripes really knocking it out and maple burl bolsters. That combo is magical. Now you throw in, now the Otter, just go ahead and tell you, three and five eighths inch on the blade, eight and a half inches overall. You can see how comfortable and amazing that thing is in hand, no matter how you're holding it. I love Amy's designs. They're super smooth, super sexy, but super functional and comfortable. She just really has a way of making really awesome knife designs that feel really good in your hand, especially when you're using them. But what really sets this off to me, this is 8670 steel. You've seen this on a ton of fiddlebacks. You've seen it on some of Joey's knives. You've seen it on Amy's knives, but this one has a forced patina on it. So 8670 is a, is a carbon steel, so it does get a patina, but when you force the patina, you can control it and make it very, very smooth, unique, and consistent, which she's done here, which a lot of people will use this type of thing to kind of cover up uh, flaws in the blade, but hers somehow actually even brings out more how perfect her grinds are and how perfect the lines are. It's pretty amazing. If you know a lot about knife making and you've seen a lot of knives made, it's just astonishing when you look at her work. She's got the edges polished there where it's where it meets the handle and on the top. Just an excellent knife maker. Can't say enough about Amy. Skeletonized full tang on this bad boy. But with Amy, there's always one extra thing. 
There's a but wait, there's more. And here it is. She is also a fantastic sheath maker. So she is as good with leather as she is with those handle scales and steel, which that's saying a lot because she's really good at that. So you can sell right there. That combo, you can't beat it. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna move quickly through the Fiddleback Forge knives this evening, starting with this beauty right here. This is the Drop Point Maverick in Zebra G10, black liners, white pinstripes, four inch blade, eight and one eighth inch overall. And the thing about the Maverick or the Drop Point Maverick is all about that handle. It is one of the most underrated handles in the Fiddleback Forge lineup and one of my absolute favorite, Andy's as well. It just feels like a handshake. It's perfect. It's literally the perfect handle. So you throw that Zebra G10 on there, you can definitely see the contours and how that thing lays out. Super comfortable, super versatile, great blade size, wonderful knife. But it came from a different knife that I'm gonna show you right now. This is the original Maverick. And obviously that blade shape's way different than the drop point because well, um, this isn't a drop point. So with the upswept tip right there, you're gonna notice immediately this was definitely made for tough skinning task and it's gonna do the job super duper well. This is cross cut black canvas micarta. You can tell by that extra texture there. The cross cut micarta tends to give you kind of a little bit more gray texture, which is awesome. Throw on some thick natural liners and thick white pinstripes. This little beefcake right here is awesome. You, that Coke bottle shape really stands out. But let me show you what these knives look like together uh, so that you can see what the actual differences are with the shapes. So you can definitely see that upswept tip compared to the Drop Point Maverick on the bottom. Same handle in general anyways. And that is the comparison of the Maverick and the Drop Point Maverick. All right, so shout out to Mr. Joe Flowers on this bad boy. Joe is the original designer of this knife. This is the Pterosaur, and you may recognize this design uh, from other knife manufacturers. He's actually had some pretty big names make this as well, but it is a classic in the Fiddleback Forge arsenal as well. So shout out to Joe. Uh, if you guys happen to know Joe Flowers, uh, Instagram or YouTube channel or any of that stuff, link it down in the comments below so everyone else can learn more about Mr. Joe Flowers and the things that he does. Amazing guy. This one right here is an emerald curly ash, black liners, white pinstripes, 1 8 inch, 8670 steel. You can tell by the hammer texture right there. The Pterosaur has a four and a quarter inch blade, eight and three quarters overall. And you can tell this thing is meant to do some bushcrafting, which if you know Joe, that's what it's all about. Set that bad boy right there. All right, next up is the Chief. This is the big brother to the Shaman and the Pygmy, and you don't normally see them dressed up quite this nicely. Um, Sir Birch is always a winner, and when you've got this much of a large platform with that large open handle, you can really show off a beautiful handle material like this right here. Got the uh, Trinity pin out rolling right there with the black pins and black liners, got white pinstripes. Taper Tang, like I said, you don't normally see the Chief decked out this much. So if you've been waiting on a real beautiful version of this, here it is. 530 seconds, 8670 steel, so you know this is tough and durable, ready to take on whatever task you have out in the wild, and it would be a shame to throw this in a safe and not use it every day. This is meant to be a tough user, so use it. But maybe you like Masur Burt's, but you don't like quite a chunky knife. Maybe you like something a little more lean, a little more feminine in shape, a little thinner, a little more nimble. Well, here it is right here. Old school ladyfinger. Black liners, popping red pinstripes to really bring that out. Also an 8670 steel, as you can tell by the hammer texture right there. This starts out as eighth inch. Skeletonized full tang. The old school ladyfinger, classic fiddleback forge design, obviously. Four inch blade nine inches overall ready to do whatever you want to do from food prep at the campsite to uh heavier bush bush crafting task you're good to go old school lady finger classic for a reason Sir birch absolutely gorgeous and speaking of bushcraft bam let's go to scandinavia real quick 
This is the Leoku, an oatmeal jute burlap. Handle materials, awesome natural liners, white pinstripes. Got the Trinity pin out rolling right there. Really sweet taper tang, beautifully done. Andy knocked that one out of the park. 8670 on the steel. It's gonna be gorgeous when it gets that patina on it. You can tell it's 8670 by that hammer texture right there. That taper tang, eighth inch thick. The Leoku has a five inch blade, nine and a half inches overall. Very traditional shape for bushcrafting in the Scandinavian region, even though the handles are done a bit differently over there. Fiddleback Forge style is where it's at. That is the Leoku. Now I showed you oatmeal jute burlap this last time, and I also showed you a drop point version of a knife when I showed you the Mavericks back here. Well, this is the drop point Renegade, the drop, pay, drop point version of the regular Renegade. And uh, this thing, you wanna talk about comfortable and functional? That's a great all around user right there. Throw on some black liners and some blue pinstripes. Four inch blade, eight and a quarter inch overall, 8670 on the steel. Sweet taper tang. I love the blue on that and how it pops with that oatmeal jute burlap. I love the handle on this knife. I love the way it feels. I love the blade shape. I love this knife, everything about it. So we're gonna set it front and center to make sure that one gets a nice home where it doesn't have to be my home because... But speaking of favorites, I can't say enough about this model. This is the Low Country. Uh, you know, it's a newer model from Fiddleback Forge. We had several last week. There's actually a couple on the site. Somehow, uh, people were crazy enough last week not to pick these up, but this is definitely my favorite of any of the newest Fiddleback Forge knives. I like the size, the form factor. I'm a fan of the Hiking Buddy. It's pretty close in size, a little bit larger than the Hiking Buddy, uh, but it feels great in hand. Now this one is Lager G10, and it's got lime green pinstripes underneath, which gives it that cool green undertone to that Lager G10. Uh, natural liners on that, really nice taper tang, done really well. You can see that translucency there was a spin it in the light, and it seems to change. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. Uh, 8670 on the steel, eighth inch. Absolutely gorgeous. I love this knife. I talked about it in length last week with the other ones. Check out that video uh, if you want to know a lot more about it. Uh, but that gives you an idea of how that thing is in hand. It, it's great. That, that is an everyday carry workhorse waiting to be in your pocket right there. Let's set him right there. All right, Bushcrafter straight up in the house. This one's actually even named the Bushcrafter. Absolute classic Fiddleback Forge design, Sapphire Box Elder Burl. You know, Box Elder Burl's been hard to come by lately, and this piece is definitely a rarity, especially with that beautiful taper tang, black liners, white pinstripes, 8670 on the steel, of course. It's the new go-to. Eighth inch thick, four inch blade, eight and a half inch overall. And why is this popular for bushcrafting? Well, you're looking at it right there. It's comfortable, locks in, indexes super well. When you're moving it around, you know where it is. Very friendly design, very confidence inspiring. You just know where it is. It's great. It's got a little bit of a finger guard right there uh, just to help you feel a little bit safer. Uh, if you were an Eagle Scout, this would be the knife you'd pick right here. That is it right there. Bushcrafter, Sapphire Box, Elder Burl. That's gonna be the first one to sell tonight, guaranteed. But if you want that same friendly design, but you want it in a little bit more pocket-friendly size, well, here you go. This is the Bushcrafter Junior. Knocks it back to a three and three eighths inch blade. Knocks it back to seven and a half inches overall. And Fire Dog Micarta, love that stuff. Awesome, black liners, white pinstripes. Taper Tang, absolutely awesome. That is the Bushcrafter Junior. Goes along with the Bushcrafter Normal. There is a Bushcrafter Senior as well. Don't have one of those to show you, but there is the comparison between the Junior and the regular. Awesome knives, both of them. All right, if you like your EDCs to be a little more on the surgical side with a precision tip, look no further than that right there. This is the Warthog, and that is cross-cut black canvas micarta very understated, but very nice. Black liners, red pinstripes, and a sweet taper tang. Might be the ultimate EDC knife, especially if you're like me and you're a fan of the Hiking Buddy. Very similar in size and feel, but different enough to be just, well, different. 
three and a quarter inch blade, seven and three eighths inch overall. That is winner winner chicken dinner. All right, maybe the king of EDC might need to be a little smaller, right? So in that case, maybe it's actually this one. You're gonna have to be the judge. Leave a comment, let us know what you think. But this is the Solo, and this is the smallest version of the Bush Hermit. Uh, there's a middle one called the Loner, but this is the baby brother, and obviously a fantastic size for pocket carry and a pocket sheath and EDC. That is Osage, in case you are wondering, with a beautiful grain, which is only gonna get darker. As it's exposed to UV light, it's gonna turn more of a honey brown, and the grain's gonna stand out even more than it already does. This one's got natural liners, blue pinstripes, which of course is a classic Fiddleback Forge example and combination. 330 seconds on the 8670 steel, two and three quarters inch on the blade, six and a quarter inch overall. That's money right there. That's awesome. All right, there is a fantastic knife maker that is friends with Andy, and his name is Bill Snow. Now, Bill Snow was the inspiration for this model. Well, actually, the model version that's bigger than this one called the Snowbill. Uh, you can see what we did there. This is the Lil Snowbill, and it is an EDC size version. Now, the one thing that stands out about the Lil Snowbill and the Snowbill is that finger hump right there that is meant to go on your ring finger not on the side of it for control and you would be shocked at how much grip strength and how much control you get with that hump being on your ring finger now this one's made for your pinky to tuck right in behind because it's a three finger design uh, the snowbill's a little bit bigger you get full four fingers just barely on that one but the indexing on this thing is incredible absolutely always know where it is the leverage on such a small knife would shock you as soon as you pick it up uh, it's just unbelievable. So this one's natural canvas micarta. It's got natural liners and that is Tiffany blue on the pinstripe. So don't adjust your screen if you're not seeing white because, well, it's not. It's Tiffany blue. 330 seconds A2. Skeletonized full tang as you can tell right there. Two and a half inch blade on this. Five and three eighths inch overall. And that is the little snowbill. And that wraps up this Fiddleback Friday. So in case you forgot, life's too short to carry an ugly knife. Carry a fiddleback or get that awesome kitchen set for that surl and a lot of choices today.